welcome to the Elements of Holton show. I'm in Holton, a fascinating area of Merseyside that spans both sides of the River Mersey and includes the towns of Widnes to the north and Runcorn to the south. Holton has a long scientific and industrial history that involves a wide range of chemical elements and processes. From the formation of sandstone 200 million years ago to the development of the Leblanc process to manufacture soap, there have been some extraordinary contributions made to the development of science and huge changes to this area of Merseyside as a result. With the help of some very special presenters on the show today, we are going to take a tour of Holton and tell its industrial stories. Our first port of call across the Mersey Gateway Bridge is the Castlefields area of Runcorn. Hello and welcome to Different Days of Runcorn. We all hope you learn something new about the place you live. Oh look, here comes Oggy. Hi, my name is Oggy and I'm a paleontologist. I love studying bones and fossils. I also love history. So let me tell you about Runcorn through the ages. Well, the present day is a lot different to the past. There are more houses. They were built in the 1970s and Runcorn became a new town. Housing estates were built with local shops, doctor surgeries and of course schools. Our school is St Augustine's. Now there are 61,789 residents in Runcorn. Here again, Runcorn did not used to be such a large place. Let's find out about the 19th century Runcorn. Originally, Runcorn was an industrial town. So and leather were made here because there was good access to water that was needed to make these. The River Mersey flows next to us and goods could be transported from Runcorn docks to anywhere in the world. Runcorn had a quarry that was mined for sand and stone. So many buildings around were made from this stone, including Norton Priory and Holton Castle. Most of the houses in Halton Village are also made from this pinkish sandstone. Keep looking out for buildings that are made from it whilst you are out and about. My favourite period of time is when the dinosaurs were in the earth. That's the time that sandstone begins to be formed. Let's go back 200 million years ago when we used to be a tropical zone like the Sahara Desert. In the Triassic period of the first dinosaurs roamed the earth, we have fossils to prove it. The world was one large landmass called the Pangaea. Continental drift made it break up into pieces that formed the continents. The section that formed Runcorn was a tropical desert. That's why when you dig down into the ground, you can find sandstone. This split happened in the Triassic period. Did you know there is a dinosaur footprint on Runcorn Hill? It belongs to the Chiotherium. This name means hand beast because the fossilised footprint is about the size of a human hand. This area used to be covered in a glacier. We were in an ice age. This started to fall and ice began to melt and move. As it moved, it dug a groove into the earth which formed the shape of the River Mersey and exposed sandstone from 200 million years ago. Some local sandstone also has rippled lines on it because the water on top of the stone had been boiled away by the prehistoric sun. There was a salt lake in the centre of the land that became Runcorn with crocodile type creatures in it. Sandstone is made from compacted rock. It is more than 95% quartz, so it is hard but can be carved and shaped. Runcorn sandstone was so sought after that it even made its way all the way to America to build New York docks, 5,340 kilometers away. Now, thinking about that river, how did we get across it then? Originally there was a ferry between Runcorn and Widnes, which cost her prints per, per, per person per trip. It was just a 
railway boat. 1868 saw the opening of a railway bridge, otherwise you still took the ferry. In 1905 the transporter bridge was built. This had a transporter cart suspended underneath this was big enough to hold four two horse carts, wagons and 300 passengers. The Silver Jubilee Bridge was opened in 1961 and was able to be used by both pedestrians and most recently the, the newest bridge is the Gateway Bridge. Three lanes each way can travel between Runcorn and Ridness. Thank you for watching Beautiful Days of Runcorn. Bye everybody. Hi, we are at Runcorn on Six Primary School, which was originally built in the 1840s, very close to the River Mersey. Allow us to take you back in time, back to 1317. The River Mersey, the pride of the city of Liverpool. 70 miles long and full of wildlife, salmon, squid and cuttlefish. In 1317, passengers and goods first started to be transported on ferries. This change meant that Liverpool could become one of the biggest trading ports in the world. Fast forward to 1793. <laughs> During the Indestructible Revolution, lots of factories began to build along the river. Being close to the water was useful for cooling and processing factories. Great news for jobs putting Liverpool on the map. Not such great news for the river though. Large amounts of industrial waste were simply dumped straight into the Mersey. The 18th century. <laughs> During the 18th century, Mersey docks in Liverpool were one of Britain's busiest ports. Salt from Cheshire, coal from Lancashire, pottery from Southampton, metal from Birmingham and sheep from Wales were all transported out of the country on ships from the Mersey docks. With so much industry though came so much pollution, plant and animal species began to die. The swing in 60s, 1960s. In the 1960s, Liverpool was the place to be. The river provided so many jobs and lots of people came to live there. Whoa, 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 you missed out on an important detail. More people means more pollution. The raw and partially treated sewage of 5 million people was being discharged directly into our rivers. Ew! Forward to the 1980s. By the 1980s, the River Mersey was among the most polluted in the world. The Mersey Basin campaign was launched to tackle this. Since then, wildlife has started to turn. The future, the future of, of the, the River, River Mersey, Mersey looks bright. Wow, that was really interesting. It's amazing how the industry in Holland made the River Mersey such a busy and important place. I wonder how the factories in Holland became so successful. Let's travel across the Mersey to witness and find out. Welcome to Fairfield Primary School in Witness. The soap factories in Halton needed a special ingredient to make soap called soda ash or potash. This was very expensive to produce, but then along came a man called Nicholas Lebon. Around late 1742, Nicholas Lebon was born by an ironworks engineer in the area of Issoudan, France. When Nicholas was nine, his parents died of a tragic incident, which meant that he lived with a guardian named Dr. Bianco, which his parents had appointed. As for his upbringing in medicine, Nicholas's spot began as he studied at the Col de Chirurgie, the School of Surgery. Nicholas Lebon graduated with a master's degree, which allowed him to be granted an occupation as the private physician to the, for the Duke d'Orléans. He was provided adequately for his wife and child to pay for their medical fees. The Académie des Sciences would award, 50, would award a 15 year patent in, all, in return of an accurate representation of salt turning into soda ash. His process, the LeBrunc process, became famous to soap manufacturers as for its simplicity to local products and the low price. Napoleon came to the factory, which was then closed as for its unraised capital by Nicolas Leblanc.
Due to this workplace cut, a gunshot was fired in Nicholas LeBlanc's untimely death in 1806. He will always be remembered to the Halton Society for the work he has accomplished throughout his life. Alas, his life came to an end. His journey will be to go on in the elements of Halton and beyond. What a tragic story, but truly amazing that a French scientist had such a huge impact on Halton. Without his invention, Halton would not be successful and the industrial centre that it is now. But working in those factories can't have been easy. Let's take a trip back over to Runcorn and find out what life was like for the people who worked in there. Thank you for joining us at Palsfield's Prem School in Runcorn. Lots of the jobs in the factories around Halton involved working in horrible and dangerous conditions. The chemicals that were made were very harmful to the workers. Let's find out more. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be looking at the dangerous jobs in Halton. This report is being produced by the HBC, also known as the Halton Broadcasting Company. It is now time for us to introduce some very special guests. Please welcome, welcome Jonathan, Jonathan Cotton, Cotton and, and Isabella Barlow. Welcome to the bleach packing factory. Now I am going to take you on a tour of my disgusting job. Not many men have been lucky enough to have lived past the age of 60. This job was not for the big holiday. If you inhale the bleach, which lots of people did, then you'll have to put on hands. Eventually, you would die. Bleach was normally used for purifying water. How dangerous was this? We had to be strong, both physically and mentally, in order to survive. I still have to drink a lot of beer, because in those wicked factories, life is unbearable. Us bleach packers had rotten teeth because of the amount of chemicals we inhaled from the bleach. We had to make our own protective clothing as we weren't provided with any, and so we wore a form of protective eye covering and wrapped ourselves in cloth to stop our skin from burning and blistering as much as we could. During this time, people people were poor, so we were lucky to be able to work, even if the job was hazardous and killed so many. And now we have arrived at the Highfield Tannery in Moncourt, which was located nearby the Bridgewater Canal in 1939. Welcome to the Halton Tanneries. We produce weather for your footwear, household goods and saddlery. Warning, this is going to get gross. The making of these included the following vile products, animal skin, feces and possible sheep brains as we needed to try and soften the hide to remove hair. Our factory is usually located in the four ends of our villages. Trust me, you wouldn't want any contact with this place. And just remember, every time you put on your boots, we have to go through a series of unfortunate events. Well folks, I think that's all we've got time for. Tune in next time for more horrible, horrible histories. histories. Goodbye. Wow, it does sound like working in the factories around here could be really rough and difficult work. But the soap industry was so successful. We can find out more by visiting Hoth Green just outside Witness. Good evening and welcome to St. Basil's Catholic Primary School, which is close to where the Alkali producing industry was based after Nicholas LeBlanc introduced his new recipe for soda ash. Some important businessmen took advantage and built more of their factories here. Let's meet John Hutchinson and William Gossel. Welcome to Soapy Rivals. This is the story of John Hutchinson and William Gossel who built some factories in witness. First of all, meet John Hutchinson. This is his first factory. Hello, I'm John Hutchinson. This is my story when I started soaping witness. Then, then Gossage came. In 1830, John Hutchinson arrived in witness where there was only fields and a few buildings. Hutchinson became big from his first factory located at Spike Island. He then 
Jonathan built another factory right next to his other. In this time in witness, John had 600 people working for him. Unfortunately, he died in 1840. Two, two years after he died, William Gossage came to Widnes to clean up the earth. He also built his own factory, which is now the Catalyst Museum. And now all his soap went worldwide. The huge factories that were built needed a lot of people to work in them. Let's go to the West Bank and Witness to learn more about this. Thank you for joining us at Witness Academy. Over the last 100 years and more, the population of Halton has really grown. We have also welcomed people from other areas of the world to work here too. When factories were built here in the 1850s and 60s, Many people from Wales and Ireland travelled to Halton in search of work when there was little work for them at home, but some people travelled much further. This is the story of the immigrants from the Ukraine. Perhaps you know people who family members or ancestors from Eastern Europe. Maybe they originally came to Halton at this time to work in one of the new factories built here. It is lovely to welcome you to Airbank Primary School. Thank you for joining us. Since the expansion of the industry here from 1850s onwards, this area of Halton has seen some very bad pollution and toxic waste from the nearby factories. Do you know anyone who remembers what the environment was like in Halton when the chemical industry was creating this pollution? Let's meet Grandad who can tell us what he remembers. So, as we know today did not come about until the 18th century, when Nicolas Leblanc, a Frenchman, discovered a reliable and inexpensive way of making sodium hydroxide, or why as it's known, which is still what forms the basis of soaps today. Everyone wanted it. But the waste material from these factories was dumped on the ground in witness and run corn. I don't suppose they really knew how dangerous this stuff could be. Anyway, my mum and dad told me to keep clear of it, but you know what happened then, don't you? Yes, you went to play on it. Of course I did. On my bike, there I was, riding along, and suddenly, thump! I was on the ground. But it wasn't the fall that hurt. No, my leg was burning from all those chemicals. Oh, it was sore. Do you want to? S I still have a scar on my leg now. Do you want to see? No, no Granddad. Ha! Well, it wasn't just me it affected. The pollution coming from these factories gave off an awful smell, and it had an effect on everything. The air was thick. It affected the crops, and it even affected the animals. When Grandad was a teenager, he got a job at one of these factories, and it was a job, and he needed one. But it was hard work, but he was with his mates, and they had a good laugh. Some jobs were better than others. Eventually, Jack married to Elsie, his girlfriend, and got a job at a new factory. But it was tough. It made the clothes stick to his back. Remember this PPE in those days? Some nights when he got home, his man had to soak his, soak his shirt off his back. It was stuck, really stuck. Just soak it off and scrub it clean. And then by the next night, it would just be the same. His skin was raw. It got on his chest too. Lots of these factory workers eventually got wrong positions. But it was never really proved that the factory was to blame. 
but you won't find that now, thank goodness. There are lots of laws and rules that make sure the waste is properly treated now. The 1974 Pollution Act made sure everything had been disposed of properly. 1974, can you believe it took that long? wonderful thing. We still have soap, plenty, plenty of it, but now it's made in a much safer way. People in factories have proper safety equipment and the whole process is cleaner and regulated. So that place where I fell off my bike that had been dumped on have been dug up and treated so we can use those areas again. This work is still going on. The air is cleaner now, so the crops and animals are blooming. It's amazing that that it wasn't until quite recently that the whole in area was cleared up, and that we, now we can we can find wildlife thriving here again. It's time to hear more about the story of industry in Holton, let's go across the Mersey to Beechwood. Welcome to Beechwood Primary School in Runcorn. Here, we are very close to the River Weaver and Bridgewater Canal, as well as the road and railway bridges across the River Mersey. The expansion of industry in Holton could not have happened without being able to transport different supplies and chemical ingredients needed by the factories. Let's find out how this happened. <laughs>
Bolton really was in such a good position to be able to access so many useful ingredients from the surrounding region that could easily be tra transported here. What an incredible place Holton is! Thank you to all the presenters and to you for joining us for the Elements of Holton Show. Goodbye!